ay mamá Iné. Todos los negros tomamos café, ay mamá Iné, ay mamá Iné. Todos los negros tomamos café, pero Belén, 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 ¿a dónde está tu metida que te busqué en su María y no te encontré? ¡Ay!
I know that you want to know how happy I feel to be here. Really happy. And thanks God for, for the opportunity to, to come to this uh, uh, scenario. For me, this is one of the most important places in the world for this music. We almost can say that everything when we talk about improvised music start here, Chicago. And that's the reference that we have back in Cuba and all those places. Just to know that you are a very special audience for me makes me very nervous. Yes. But uh, I'm here because I want to play music for, for you and I want to free, help you to heal and free your souls. So I remember being at the, in New York and I went to meet, Meal for Grace was having a duo with Andrew Cirilli, which last night was here in town. I see some faces that, I recognize some faces that were there. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because the first thing that I, he asked me was, like, where are you from? Because of my accent, of course. I said, I'm from Cuba. Oh, you're from Cuba, so can you sing? And I wasn't sure of what he is asking me. And I asked him, what do you mean by sing? I mean, I'm not a singer, I'm a drummer. He said, no, but can you sing when you play drums? He say, I'm sorry. He say, he say yes, if you can, when you, when you play, can you feel the drums? Can you feel that? Can you sing with the drums? And I say, my answer was yes. And his, his answer was, that's what's up. And so I, I invite you to my journey right now again to be part of what I feel inside and what I sing because for me it's very important to play for, well, normally in Cuba we say that we play for the dancers, which is totally true, totally right. But also we play for God because we've been created by God, you know. We want to give it back to God what the gift that He gave us in any specialty right here. So I want to I want you you all to feel that right now. And so Thank you for coming. I was expecting like three or five piece of people. I said I I, I I was I was I wasn't sure if after Andrew Cyril people will come to hear this show. But thank you you all for coming. I just wanna say thank you to Lily which put this invite me to, to, to be here. Adam, thank you for, for bringing and say yes to Lily. Um um Guys, we play music to free our soul, and so let's free our souls. I forgot something very important. My back is very full, it's very heavy. And so I have those albums, LPs over there. I don't want to bring them back home. Guys, please, be good. What we say is that we, we encourage you to, to buy the record, and, and I want you to enjoy. But if you don't like it for 
any reason you don't like it, this is gonna sound bad, but uh, it's okay. If you don't like it, give it to some give give it to somebody that you don't like.
Cool. Thanks for sticking around, everyone. Um, yeah, so this is Francisco Mela. That was a beautiful performance. So yeah. thank you for, for doing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, God, that's loud. Um, the first qu question I wanted to ask, and you kind of talked about it during your performance, though, was um, your newest project is called Music Frees Our Souls. And I was wondering if you could like talk more about that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Music frees our souls. Uh, I heard that the first time from McCoy Tyner because I was afraid playing in front. Well, actually, I was in Tokyo, Japan, with McCoy Tyner, and in the in the audience was this uh, famous drummer. Louis Nash, a swinger. <laughs> My gosh. And I'm about to play, but I look at the audience and I see Louis Nash there. <gasps> wow, I had to play from this guy right now. Well, we start playing, but my playing was terrible, terrible. And McCoy noticed that. I say, what up, man? Like, what's happening? Oh, man. Oh, McCoy. I'm sorry. What's wrong? I say, you, 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 should, you should call him to play, not me. He say, who? Luis Nash, he's there. I didn't call Luis Nash for this gig, he said. I called you. I had nothing to teach you, uh, uh, to, uh, to teach uh, 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 Luis Nash. I want to teach you. I want you to grow up with me and so you can pass this into the next generation. We play music, free yourself. We play music to free our souls. And so I stayed with that phrase. And I was like so free after that show. We start playing and I was like feeling, because I, I have his support. And so there, there, in addition to that, there's two occasions where we are playing at the Blue Notes in in New York. The first time, yeah, um, we are in the break, in the dressing room, close, uh, the, the, the door was closed, knock, ting, ting, ting. And McCoy says, coming up, coming up, coming in. And I opened the door, and guess what? Who is there? She Korea. And Chick Corea is, is like a baby from McCoy, like, McCoy, you sound so great. I love it. I love it. Wow, you are in, uh, such an inspiration. But McCoy is like this. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm inside, I'm saying to, I'm telling to myself, McCoy, that's Chick Corea. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, um, finally, Chick is, had to say bye-bye, McCoy. Have a second, a great second set. See you. Great to see you. Bye bye. The door closed, and I asked McCoy, McCoy, do you know who was that person? He said, I, I remember seeing the three of them in the front road, listening to the quartet. Quartet? What quartet? Coltrane. But uh, this is only one person. You're talking about three persons. Kiss Jerry, Herbie Hancock, and she Korea. Okay, good. So I stay with that. And so remember, I have the experience, uh, music free our, our soul from Japan. We are back in New York, and we play that that Monday. And then, like two two more months, we play again at the Blue Note, and we. I see myself in the same in the same situation, having uh, the dinner with McCoy inside the dressing room, tun 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 tun, knocking the door. McCoy say, "Come on in," and we open the door, and I I, I open the door, and it's a little guy like this, black guy like this, with a, a dreadlocks, and when McCoy saw him, he grabbed him like, "Jemenga." <gasps> And they start talking, 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 but I still don't know who's the guy. 
I didn't recognize. Then he said, bye. We closed the door. I said, McCoy, who's that? He said, McCoy answered me. I wish I was that free. Who was that piano player? Cecil Taylor. <laughs> Cecil Taylor. What's your name? That's Ken. Ken. <laughs> What's happening? You see? <laughs> Good to meet you, and thank you, thank you for excellent. <laughs> and so, to answer your question, mm -hmm. I saw the McCoy. He was at the edge of jumping to be like a free mm -hmm. improviser musician, like Cecil Taylor. But I don't know, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. And so, having that experience and Remember, remembering when what he said to me, I need you because I want you to grow on me, grow up with me, and pass on to the next generation. And so I came out with that idea, the avant-garde side of McCoy Tyner, music frees our soul. Wow, that's a great story. Uh, yeah, I just like. I think this kind of connects to. Um, you kind of had, when you were starting off, at least in the more American scene, we're more in the straight ahead, mainstream world. And I was wondering, how did you kind of tra transition more into the avant-garde scene? Yeah. Maybe you don't know that, and maybe Cubans don't know that. But once you get out of Cuba, you are a free guy. <laughs> you are avant-garde, man. <laughs> you are free. Yeah. And so you can play whatever you want, yes or no? Sure. And so, yeah, I came here. And so you have to, I mean, I love the American music, I mean, yeah. eh, 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 jazz music. Yeah, it doesn't and have to be so divided, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Well, eh, 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 it was, it was uh, really simple. And then, well, I, I have my, uh, my own approach. Yeah. I mean, yeah, free, I come from Cuba. Mm -hmm. I never want to play like a real American drummer, because they had this touch, I respect that. And so, but I, I, I did learn the, the, the language and I did my, my homework. So, um, like I was telling you yesterday, something that really helped me to decide to, to come to, to become a real avant-garde, it was when I was, I was playing at, the, at, at Smalls with, with this piano player and the quartet. And Gerald Cleaver, the drummer, he was there and he stayed to listen to me. And after I played the first set, he said, man, you should be in this direction. You are not a jazz. I mean, instead of hate jazz. You are a free man. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Cuba. And, 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 and he did something that he promised that night. He said, I want to introduce you to William Parker, Patricia Parker, Hamid Dre, all these guys. Because you belong to, to this scene. Because the way you play is nothing to do with, with straight, straight ahead. Uh, and I was like so happy when he said that. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the, the, the contact, the, 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 the information. I contact William Parker, then I connect with Patricia Parker, with Cooper Moore, all these people, and then I'm a free man now. <laughs> That's beautiful. I want to ask him one question. Okay. <laughs> Why do you laugh every time that I say something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's wearing a Cecil Taylor shirt. Uh, oh my gosh! Look at that. <laughs> yes. That, that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's amazing. And is that when you kind of connected to Milford Graves as well? Then uh, one, I'm, I'm part of. I'm starting to be part of the scene. You know, you get to, you have to, to, to get to know everybody, mm -hmm. because you are in the community now. I remember that Cooper Moore. The first thing he said to me is that he's like, "You are part of this scene, not the other scene. You, you are in this family right now." And so I'm a free man. Yes, you are a free man. Mm -hmm. I'm a player too. So yeah. uh, they really hugged me and. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad because I'm in, I mean, I'm in Boston a lot, and so I don't get to play with, with them too much. 
but uh, but uh, we are still connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you get to know Milford Graves? Yes. Yeah. So that's one. Uh, uh, that uh, that was one of the moment. I mean, the the times when I went to the no, the first time that I went to to the Arbitrum Festival was uh, uh, that time when Milford and Andrew are there in the, on the stage playing a duo together and and I couldn't believe that I mean be there watching and listening to those two guys over there Milford Grace and, and it was amazing he I, you want to know something mm -hmm. when I went to meet him he was trying to 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 he was putting uh, uh, together the drums, and Oliver Lake was trying to tell him some, hey, Milford, blah, 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 but he already talking to me. And he said to, to Oliver Lake, wait a minute, this guy from Cuba, this is a special. Let me talk to him. <laughs> and I feel good. And so he asked me, hey, man, you from Cuba, what do you play? I play drums. Do you sing? What do you mean? I mean, you sing when you play. I say, yes, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, and so I met Milford. And like a week later, because mm -hmm. I already get his contact info, I was in his house mm -hmm. giving, a, a, I, I, I went to his house and I gave a, a present, a drums that Rakalan, Bob Moses, you know Bob Moses? Mm -hmm. Rakalan gave me a drums, mm -hmm. like a djembe, a snare, those drums that he used, yeah. and I gave it to Milford. I said, Milford, you're going to do better with it than me. And, and and he almost said the same thing that Cecil Taylor said to me. He said, "Man, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to promise you anything, but uh, I have a show coming up. But I don't want to promise because I don't feel good." And he he got sick. And, but uh, just by saying that, I was like, "Me for you don't have to invite me to play with you. I'm already playing with you here." Mm -hmm. So we got this a little short connection, but it's strong. Wow. Um. Yeah, I guess I wanted to kind of segue that into, well, I met you because you were my teacher at Berkeley. And you're a very special teacher, and I learned so much from you. And I think that you taught something greater than just technique or licks or whatever. It was like, why do you play music? Like, asking those questions to yourself. Like, what is the greater meaning of this? Like, what is the purpose? Um, yeah, so... And teaching seems to be a big part of you, whether you're like in a formal setting at a school or just playing for people or like in this setting. And I was wondering, how did you like, what does teaching mean to you? And what do you feel like you want to teach people? I want to teach people because they teach me. When you were playing and I saw you in my room as a student, I went like, oh. And I asked her, where are you from? She said, from Chicago, what are you doing here? <laughs> you already know what to do. <laughs> and when I, uh, uh, when I heard you playing, your approach and your idea, I remember that you were developing something. I was like, Lily, yes. Nobody play like this here. And, and it's true, that is part of me. I love to teach. I love to teach because... Uh, of course, I learn when I teach, and I, re I reinforce my, my, my knowledge or my wisdom or my or whatever I know. But also, it's is feel good when you share something with, with people and they like what you share with them. Yeah. yeah, you've had an impact on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, all, everyone who I know who was friends with at Berkeley and played with you, it was just like, you could tell like the like change in their playing once they met you. Um, so yeah, it's very special. Do you, what do you feel like you've learned from your students? Mm. <laughs> well, I won't tell you what I learned from you. No, it's like, I'm not, they, not me, but like other, other okay, students. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Let me say this before I answer your question, Lily. Mm -hmm. Normally, 
well, I asked McCoy, McCoy, why you don't write, I mean, why you don't teach instead of being traveling, he said, because he said that everything he learned, he didn't learn on the st at the school. He learned the street. So, and I said, well, can you write it? Why you don't write a book and so people, because I don't know what to say, he said. And so, that impact me in a way that now when I teach, is what I play. And, the, and it's also the experience that I had, a, like the last gig, like for example, last night. Yeah. So if I play last night, that's what I'm gonna be teaching you. Rather than bring a book and telling you, because you already, all the students when they go to school, they already know the rudiments and the technique and everything. You don't wanna teach that. They already know what to, go, what to do. I mean, you can tell them, okay, you need to work on this, but the goal of all those students is to play, not to, to learn how to play just the rudiment. They wanna be on the stage and play. And so when I teach, that's what I teach, what I learned last night on my gig. Mm. And so every student is like the doctor in his office. It's a different pain, yeah. <laughs> all right? So, if you come, I hear you playing. You're the doctor. You're the doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In my room, I'm the doctor. In my room, I am the doctor. I love it. I'm the special, not the therapist, but I'm the doctor. <laughs> yeah, not the therapist, because sometimes the student come with some crazy <laughs> stuff. That, like, for example, this guy came crying because his girlfriend just left him. I say, man, this is your drum lesson. Now you're crying. Let's, let's forget about it, play some drums, and let me tell you how you're playing by your girlfriend being affecting you. And he start playing and I told him, you see, you see, you need to work on this. Your heart is not good now. So if I'm teaching you <laughs> the, 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 the right symbol pattern, which is like ting, tinkling, tinkling, ting, tinkling, I know that you're gonna learn, but it's not only to learn, you have to, to feel it. And so most of the time they learn what you teach, but they don't get the gig yet. Why you don't get the gig? They come to me, they say, but I didn't get the gig, I learned the pattern. Because it's not the, the pattern, it's the feel. Mm. And so that's what I'm teaching them, how to play with a better feel. Yeah, and you, another thing you were saying to me too is, yesterday was touch and sound. Yeah. That's like your guiding. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the this is the new thing that I'm teaching now in my in my in my classroom. But Lily wants to know it. Lily, you gotta go back to Berkeley then. Uh, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> I'll be staying here. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, no, no. <clears throat> I just noticed that Lily, one of the 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 most important thing for us as a musician is to take care or to understand that sound is not the same, it's not the same as touch. Mm -hmm. It looked like it's the same, like no, your touch, no, your sound, but it's not the same. And so I've been, I've been teaching this, this 12 week program, mm -hmm. how to, how to evaluate what who carries who? If if sound carries the touch, or the or the touch carries the sound, in order to. And so it's very mental thing. For example, if I ask you, how do you practice touch? What do you do? Mm. Okay, that's the answer. So what about how do you practice sound? It's by playing. By playing, and right? Be, and like listening. Okay, listen to who? To the drums. Okay. The sound. Okay. And so, you mean that sound is by listening to the drums, and so touch is by listening to what? To the touch is listening to your feel and like your like the feeling of it and your like the sensation in your body. Yes, she passed. <laughs> she got it. She passed. She got it. She got it. Well, that's it's that's like the physicalness. Yeah. Thank, th 
thank you. Yeah. That's the point. To make the student to think about that when they go to the set, they just don't bang the drums like that because if the drums don't sound good, they will feel it. Mm -hmm. They will be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be here no more. You know? But yeah. if the drum sounds good by your sound and your touch, they stay. Did you feel it? Yeah. No, they didn't feel it. <laughs> no, they did. Okay. okay I did. Okay. I felt it. You felt it? Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah. And so that's what I'm being working with, with the student on how to, what is, what is, what, how to divide, I mean, the definition of sound and the definition of, of how do you work with both of them without separating them, touch and sound. Mm. So it's very, yeah. if you think of that, when, now when you go to the set, you touch and you sound, and they've, what they receive is like amazing. Even you play hard, mm -hmm. because you're taking care of them. If that makes sense for you, yeah? What about you? <laughs> yeah? You are a drummer, I can see it. You play drums, right? I'm not a good drummer. But you play drums? I, 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 I hit things with my hands. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I think it comes out to you like in your intentionality of playing drums, but also like living your life. Mm. Like it, it feels like music is this kind of like a way to understand life in a bigger way. And I feel like it seems like you have a very spiritual connection to something greater. And I think that's like important to talk about. Well, I, I mean, if you, yeah, um, yes. Um, I'm a Jehovah Witness, mm -hmm. and so I really, I read the Bible every day, and, and I try to study it every day just to understand the, the purpose of life, what I'm here, what is, and so I, I apply that to, to, the, to, to the, the music too, because the music was created, God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know how you do it, but every time that I play, I say, God, thank you for this opportunity. Please help me to, to, to do what you want me to do. Um, that makes a connection right there. Mm -hmm. So, it's not up to me, it's up to. So. No, if, if you can feel something that you're like tied to something bigger, which I think is what makes music, whether it's God or something greater or just like the universe or whatever, or something you just like don't know. I feel like understanding that there's just so much we don't know and some, yeah, I don't know, tapping into that. That's kind of why music transcends. Mm. Um, yeah, so thank you. I guess, well... Um, we were talking today about like what's been inspiring us lately mm. and I'm just curious to to hear about what's inspiring you because you you said that you wrote three songs today yeah actually it was two songs because they it's the same one with a little arrangement but uh, that's true yeah I I I been at Berkeley I mean I've been in Boston like a year and a half and everybody's asking me Mel I want you gonna play with your own band or your your new project, and I having, because I, I don't get any inspiration over there. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to talk about why the reasons, but I, I don't get inspired over there. And so I just came yesterday, and I went to that show, and then you brought me to this beautiful house with the lake over there. And I went this morning, and I was remembering that music, and listening to the waves, and I was like, no, hold on one second. Something is coming to my mind. And, and I, write, I start writing music right there. 
I wrote two songs. Would you like to listen to? You sure? You should sing it. You want to sing it? No, I had to. I, I had to. I play it through the through the through the phone because what I do now is I sing. I sing the song that is tape recorded. I go to my piano and I wrote it out. But uh, the song sounds like this. We're hearing it first. <laughs> yes, um, I hope you it's like very it. very special. I hope you like it. And so, this is the first one. I think there. Right here, yeah. right? Now I go to the piano. <laughs> well, I don't remember. I have to listen. But, but uh, that's the first one. And, um, Beautiful. Thank you. And um, the second one you want to hear? Yeah. The second one, uh, I got inspired because, um, you know, David Bireles was last night here. He's from Cuba. And, and I record his first record. We used to be like the, ma the best friends. We're still cool, but we used to be better. So uh, I saw him yesterday, last night after so long. And, and I was telling Lily that I didn't know how we were going to react. And it was per pretty cool. Was and cool. we hang out a little bit until late. And and today in the morning, he sent me his new record. Uh, and I sent to him something that I record with that he was supposed to be, but he didn't, he couldn't. And um, we share the thoughts and we talk about it and we were happy. And so being in front of the lake and thinking of the moment that I, I mean, of last night when I saw and I heard that be playing, Something came out, like a little Cuban thing. Because maybe, Lily was saying, maybe you guys going to record. I don't want to go too fast. <laughs> let's wait. Let's see how the relation goes. But I love David. And he's an amazing musician. And, and I think that we together can play good. But uh, only God only knows that. But uh, this is the, the song that I, that I wrote. I hope you like it. Don't 
I guess that everyone has a different way of composing. That's what I do when I'm, I feel inspired because I don't have the, the music paper. Of, I don't have a perfect pitch. To, to, and so I had to re record it like this, and then I go to the piano, and it's a new baby. Mm -hmm. When I go to the musicians, it sounds amazing. Yeah, I bet. It's great to hear how, it, like how you do it and what's going on like kind of like behind the scenes, because I think even for me, I like to write music, but it's still such a mystery, and I still am like, how are people doing this? And so it's cool to like see the actual process, and yeah, I don't know, it, it does just come from like a voice inside you, is really whatever you're playing, however complex, you know, it's, it's just like a voice. And I think too, you were talking about how you're always playing for dancers, and I mean, you could hear it in your music and you're playing, no matter if it's in like a concrete like grid or if it's more free, but it's always danceable. Mm. Well, it's a responsibility that mm. we have. Mm. If, we, if, we, if we believe in that responsibility, it's raining. Okay. Hey, if we believe in that, and so... we become more responsible. So now when you play, you don't play patterns, you just play music. And that music resonates in a way that is a dancer, mm -hmm. you know? So you don't have to work hard if you uh, uh, believe in that responsibility. I mean, work hard in, in, in turn to, to play the instrument. It, 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 it becomes more easy when you Think of the dancer, or or you, or you, or of, or you sing mm -hmm. with your instrument, than than just say by you, say I'm a drummer, I play drums, but I play music too. That's too separate. That's not good. Mm -hmm. I'm a drummer, but I play music too. Not good. <laughs> so that's why I don't want to see this instrument as a as a drums. This is my piano, it's my flute, it's my guitar, mm -hmm. it's my voice. Oh. Thank you. Yes, my, it's my, all my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we have some time for some audience questions. And if anyone has a question, I'll repeat it back through the mic for the recording. Uh, what um, years did you play with McCoy? I played with McCoy since 2009 to 2019. Nine to 19, 10 years. Yes, right there. No, I play with, uh, um, you know, every, we come to every single show of McCoy. They were very close, but the bass player was uh, uh, for 10 years, I mean, since I, played, I was there, Gerald Cannon, Gerald Cannon. But every will come every every show, mm. and the and bass player was nervous. <laughs> yes. No more questions. Got any other questions? I think that they know yeah. everything. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Um, do you have a favorite element of the drum kit? Like, do you have a favorite drum or favorite or favorite symbol? Do you have a favorite element of the drum set? A favorite drum or a symbol?
It depends. Depends because it's, it's not about the instrument, it's about what you have inside as a musician. But uh, it's good to have a good instrument quality, you know? Yeah. It's nice to have a, a nice instrument. But at the end of the day, what you have is what you have. Is you just you can deal with that. It's not about the, the instrument no more. Mm. Yeah. But I like my symbols. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, Tommy, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, I know you were you were talking about the you know seeing the Milford Graves Andrew Surreal concert, but I I also recently heard a recording of, of you, I think it was in a band with like, it's two drummers, like Chad Taylor, it's like some Italian people, and, and, and you, and it just sounded really, I'm used to hearing like, you know, when you hear two drum sets, I feel like more often than not, it tends to be more of this like, more like a really like heavy fusion context or something, you know, when it's, a, you know, when it's two full kits, but I thought that was like a really, I don't know, it was just really, you know, ear, mind, and, and soul exciting, I don't know if you just broadly speaking, had anything to share about like that experience in that particular project or that type of project? I don't know if you've done anything like that before. Cool, well, yeah, the question from yeah. Tommy. Tommy's a great drummer, too. Tommy, man. Yeah. I uh, hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, man. I can feel you. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> um, there was a recording of you playing double drums with Chad Taylor yeah, yeah. and some Italian people. What was that experience like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that experience was much better that the first time. The first time was, uh, there's a recording, three three albums on Blue No, with Joe Lovano and Esperanza Spaldi, and the record, and the, the name of the band is Oz Five. I say that with the Chad Taylor was a better experience because I didn't know that, that when two drummers played together, back in the days, it used to play music, I thought that was to impress each other, impress each other. And so we didn't play so good there. We we did some good music, but uh, at the end of the day, when we met with that drummer again, the the drummer before Chad Taylor with Joe Lovano, we were talking, drinking coffee, and we both said, "Wow, I was I I, I was afraid that Lovano fired me because he wants you." And he said, "I thought the same. That's why I was playing so fast and so loud because I want Lovano to hire me." And so uh, you can see that we didn't know that Lovano has a, an idea, an approach of, of what Coltrane did with Rachi Ali and, and Elvin Jones, but I didn't know that. So that, that, that time was terrible. With but the Us Five? Us Five. Who, who was the drummer in that? Uh, Otis Brown. Oh, okay. Otis Brown. But now, Tommy, with Chad Taylor, I'm, all, I'm already in, that, in this side uh, improvising. So Chad Taylor is one of the greatest young improvisers. He's drummer. from Chicago too? Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. You know, do you want to, to, to tell me, do you want to know what was uh, Chad Taylor advice for my first uh, uh, drum solo show? He say, play, is, play is spaces. Don't make them to wait. What note you going to play? Don't play fast, just play relaxed. So that's what, uh, that's what uh, uh, Chad Taylor uh, shared with me. But yeah, playing with Chad Taylor was amazing because, uh, well, first of all, I didn't know who was gonna be the main drums drummer because there was one percussionist and one drummer at the end. They, they, uh, uh, the guy find out that, the Italian uh, uh, piano player find out that his dad, which was the one who put this project together, uh, uh, he he put two drummers together, and so it wasn't a percussion. Is it? I can play play percussion, but percussion, but not too long because my hands are not used to that. But uh, but uh, then he said, "Okay, I want you guys to play drums, and so be kind each other to each other," and so we were. Chad was so amazing that he just said, Mela, I followed you. I said, you follow me, I follow you. And so we were very gentle to each other and, 
And yeah, to Tommy, you know what? I didn't, I haven't listened to that recording because I think that the piano player got mad because I couldn't go to the tour. Yeah, because I record and then I couldn't go to the tour. And so I di they didn't send to me that, that recording. And you listen to that, I don't have it. <laughs> Amazing. The, the, the internet spit it out one day. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, but it sound okay? What do you think? It sounds really good, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I think I, 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 they maybe could have put, they could have stereo spread you guys a little farther if I was being really picky. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think it was awesome. Like I said, I was like, damn, this is like actually, like two drummers with a piano, man, that sounded awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like well, I want to look look for that because I haven't heard that. The guy got mad and so. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what? Uh, his dad was a great producer. He put this band together and he died. The, die, the, the father of the piano player. And then the piano player got again contact everybody that he didn't know. And put the project together because he wanted to dedicate it to his dad, to, to his dad's memory. Mm -hmm. And so we all were like, okay, what is this? Because we already talked to somebody, but the guy died. Like, amazingly, you, can you believe that? Putting together the project, he died, that the project stayed like, oh. like who's gonna take care of this? But uh, yeah, to Tommy, thank you for, for bringing that up because I wanna check it out. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tommy. Yeah, they're cool tunes and great playing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think our time is ru running. I think it's five. Are we playing a game more? Or no? <laughs> no? <laughs> I w yeah. no. No? That's it? Yeah, but maybe some people will stay. I don't know. <laughs> we have to finish at five. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but. But you'll I be didn't. Here but uh, what is Adam? Adam is here? I don't one side for a Let second. me ask Adam something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll come out. I think Olivia. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. And so you'll be, but you'll be back in a few weeks. Are you? Uh, to Chicago. Ah, uh, yes. I'm coming to Chicago for the jazz festival. Yeah, the Chicago jazz festival. I want to be playing here with Duduso Makatini, which is a great piano player from South Africa. And he's like becoming like, very important piano player from over there. So I've been touring with that trio, and we're gonna record the album during that tour. We're coming to Chicago, that's right. Yeah, September 2nd. September 2nd, so we are recording, oh, we are recording on the 26th, 26th and mm -hmm. 27th of August. So September 2nd, we're here. Yeah. Okay, Great. so we're gonna have a, a brand new Recording, not record, recording. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, yeah. Francisco. It's oh been great gosh. to have you here. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very thank much, you, Lily. It's so great. <laughs>